friends, Tamsin here from Babbling Books. Today I am going to be sharing with you how to use vintage papers in journaling. I love, absolutely love, creating journals that include all different kinds of mixed media. Things that I've found, things that have significance or prompt memories from me, photos and things like that. But I also love using my collection of vintage papers that I've gathered up over many many years of just loving the look and feel and texture of paper ephemera. Now I am also selling some ephemera packs on my website. Hopefully by the time you're watching this they're not sold out but I will leave a link to where you can find them in the description box below. They look something like this though that may change in the future and they are an assortment of things that I have collected up. So I'm gonna be using one of these packs today to show you what you could do with them. But you can also use this if you've collected up your own vintage papers, whether those are pages from books like um, poetry or encyclopedias, whether those are old maps and stickers, anything that you can possibly think of that is old and has lovely texture and color you can use to create beautiful journal pages so you don't necessarily need to use my packs to create this effect but you can if you'd like to so let's get started so these are my little paper packs which are available for sale on my website at the moment if they happen to be sold out and you click on the link please sign up to my newsletter and you'll be alerted when the new collection goes on sale so in them you can see there are vintage french uh, tickets we've got some postage stamps little tiny labels which are actually from apothecary jars and have various different things um, written on them we've got some like illustrations from a book about botanicals we've got poetry lots of like beautiful yellow yellowed vintage pages from novels, handwritten letters in French, a page from another botanical illustration book, we've got vintage French newspapers and coloured papers. And if you flip it over you can start to see some of the other items that are in here as well. So more French tickets, pages from encyclopedia, we've got dream interpretation here, more vintage French handwritten things, which I think this one is actually a receipt or some kind of document. And then we've got two different kinds of maps. Uh, and there's a, a few other things tucked inside here. And so you can see that each of the packs have similar sorts of things in them, um, but there is a mixture and each one is completely unique because all the items which are in there are vintage or antique. They come from a variety of different sources and backgrounds and so they're really going to give you beautiful textures, um, this aged coloured paper to add to your journal, which is so unique and you just can't get from using modern paper. So what I'm going to do now is break down one of these packs and start using it and give you some examples of how you could use this in your own journaling to create lots of different techniques and styles. final page and just to give you an idea of which elements from the paper pack I've actually used here you can see sort of working from left to right I've used the vintage French I think this is some sort of um, accounting or a ledger um, type paper which was quite plain I've layered with it one of these vintage French uh, tickets as well an old map um, a fragment of plain paper on which I've written a little note about the things that I am grateful for using a fountain pen. I also attached one of the apothecary labels. Now these apothecary labels on the back actually have the original gum still in place. So I just wet my finger slightly in a glass of water and um, smoothed that over the gum and it's stuck down really firmly so it looks like that is still working well. There's a little fragment from the corner of a page of writing. Then I've used what was actually a vintage French telegram. I'm not sure the actual date that this was sent but it seems to be around about the turn of the century. Over on this side I've used some 
very thin, almost transparent um, paper, which is from a fabric pattern. Uh, I think this is really interesting, gives a little bit of texture while you can still see through it. I've used a section of the vintage music note paper, another piece of the telegram over here because I just loved these really interesting um, sort of post, I want to call them postmarks, though they're not postmarks given that it's a telegram, but these lovely old stamps in any case. Layered on here I have used another piece of the same paper that appears on the left hand side. I've stamped a botanical looking stamp over the top there to give it some texture. And of course I have also used the Australian five cent postage stamp over here which has an interesting little postmark across it. And I forgot to mention in the center here is a section from a gardening book. So it's an illustration of a plant in a pot. Some of the other elements that I've used which are not included in the paper pack are this print on sticker, the details of which I will put in the description box below. I've used one section here and another up here. And I've also put some empty washi tape down here to give you an idea of how the page can look with different colors. I've tested out the fountain pen over here with the green ink and then just a plain black ballpoint pen. And you can see that both of them work really well with the vintage sort of feel of all of these papers and the muted color palette. I really love working with vintage papers. They've got such gorgeous texture, they've got really really interesting little details about them and I think it adds so much depth to a collage page in a journal. And you can see that I've used a mixture of the vintage papers and also one piece that is from a tourist brochure, so something modern that I have collected. And I like the way that you can start to combine those things and mix them together. On this page I've also used some vintage stamps, um, one from Poland and one from Netherlands here. I've used a wax seal which I've decorated with a little bit of like a gold pen just to highlight the stamp texture. And I've started to really layer the papers. Um, this paper here says that it's from 1827 I think, that's what that is, um, which is really amazing to have such an old piece of paper and some of the papers which are in my packs are as old as that as well. And I've layered that along with the wax seal, which is modern, on top of some more vintage papers, some plain brown paper, which I've added a stamp to in a sort of brown tone. I've also added some stamps over here to give texture and a little bit of a date stamp, um, which has been applied in kind of a rough way to give it texture, to make it fit with the sort of vintage style of the papers. I've also used some print on stickers which are a kind of sticker which is applied using a kind of transfer method where you rub them and they are semi-transparent when they're applied to the paper. I've also used them here, here, and over here. I'm really happy with how this page turned out. I think it's really well balanced and I love the texture and style that the vintage papers give to it, especially when combined with the modern um, paper here and the modern stamps and wax seals. You can also use vintage papers for really simple, clean styles that don't necessarily have as much detail or are as crowded as some of the previous pages that I've shown. So this is a spring themed page. You can see that I've used just a little bit of the vintage paper uh, on this page with a stamp on top in a brown ink. On this page I've used another piece of the same letter over here to give it some continuity and I've used that paper again down here. So even though they aren't clearly you know, torn from each other, the colour of the paper and the colour of the pen and ink that's been used is tying the whole page together. 
using a candle I burnt the upper edge of this piece of paper um, just by lighting it on fire and then blowing out the flame almost immediately which has given it another really interesting color and texture um, on the paper obviously do that in a well ventilated area and take care when burning paper uh, and ensure that you don't have anything else flammable around you on top of the vintage paper in this corner I've done two different stamps one in brown and one in black along with using a postage stamp uh, which is an old Belgian stamp some more of the print on stickers which are from the same set which was used over here and of course a wax seal this time with a crown design uh, which is one of my favorites down here I've used a piece of just brown craft paper, layered it with a stamp, a little bit of uh, oil pastel crayon to give it a little bit of pink color and tie in with the rest of the page, and a couple of the small print on stickers as well. To create this circular design uh, with the print on stickers, I actually used a piece of vintage paper and lightly taped it on applied all of the print on stickers around there and and then I decided that the page looked a little bit crowded a little bit overwhelming with the paper on there so I actually just gently removed this piece of paper and redrew re the heading underneath and it's created this nice crisp line uh, around there and I think the effect of it is really nice and then also I still have this little round piece which I can use in a different journal page in the future. If you love a more crowded or more detailed style of journal page this is another example of using lots of different vintage papers and the way that you can really um, create interesting textures, create layers by using the vintage items and not using them as whole pieces. So over here uh, and down here I have sections of a receipt or a kind of invoice um, and I've torn the top corner and the bottom corner and used those to create some harmony across the page but I haven't used the entire thing and that means that I've got sort of three quarters of the page that I will use in other pages of my journal. I've then layered that with some uh, poetry over here and a number of pieces of music paper. So it gives this kind of thematic um, element to the whole piece. And I've also tucked a little tiny scrap of the music paper on top. So I've got quite a few layers here. These layers are all complemented with a couple of modern elements as well. So I've used washi tape. Um, with a purple pattern here and with a floral pattern here and here and I've used a stamp uh, a reading lady stamp and I've stamped that onto this very thin transparent paper which is actually from fabric patterns and I've included those in all of my uh, vintage paper packs because it's such an interesting texture it's smooth and shiny on one side and it's a little bit rougher on the other and it actually takes really well to a stamp or something written on top of it but because it's semi-transparent you can start to see those layers being achieved which is lovely. I've also used another piece of the letter or writing paper which you might remember from the previous page uh, and this time I've used the crown stamp but with a blue wax which is really lovely um, and picks up the light really nicely. Overall I think the harmony of this page is achieved by balancing the different elements and creating those layers building up those different textures. My final example is another really simple one and this is a nice clean open airy sort of a layout and it's themed around sort of green and plants. I've used mainly the vintage papers over here you can see that I've created a blackout poem which is when you take a poem or a piece of writing could be a page from a fictional or non-fictional work and you black out sections of it to create a, another poem. It's a really fun technique and it adds a lot of interest to your page and it's also something really fun to do if the types of papers that you have are not really thematically linked to the journal page that you're working on but you'd like to create a thematic link. You can sometimes do that by creating a poem which relates to the topic which is not necessarily the original intention of that piece of printed work. Aside from these 
grain pieces which are all from the same telegram. I've included these two illustrations from a gardening book which were part of my paper packs and the green man and how to plants were headings from that same page. So I've just taken them and rearranged them into something uh, slightly different. The only modern element that I've included on this page is this washi tape down here which I thought breaking down the different elements of an acorn and oak leaf I thought were really relevant to this page and it was just really nice to include them. I haven't put much text on this page. I wanted to keep it really clean, really open uh, and really in strong contrast to some of the other pages that I've done. Uh, to give you an idea of how the vintage papers don't necessarily have to be used in a layered, crowded style of journaling, they can be used in this sort of clean, open style as well. And that's it from me. I hope you have enjoyed this little adventure into how you can use vintage papers to create beautiful journal spreads. I really enjoyed making this video. There is nothing I love more than sitting down with a good audiobook and creating something out of lovely, crispy, colored vintage papers. So if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please let me know in the description box below and like this video and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you soon.